It's a paradigm shift. Come on. Yep. Compassion hides in your pain. Don't be afraid of pain. Courage hides in service. Go serve somebody out there and try to walk a mile in their shoes. You'll find courage you never knew you had. Come on. And in 1 John chapter 4, beginning in verse 16b, God is love. Mm. Whoever lives in love lives in God. Amen. And God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like Him. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. God is love. Mm. God doesn't just love. He is love. Yes. Yeah. Meditate on that. He is. Love overcomes all. Forever. Yeah. Always. Fear and doubt is what trips us up. Yeah. We get afraid. We doubt. Yes. And we come into the safe place and hide. Yeah. Yeah. Hide in the church. Yeah. On, among okay. the beloved saints. <laughs> and yet... The wounded and the dying are outside the church walls and outside the pretty glass. And, and yeah, we need to pick them off one at a time and have wonderful guys come in that become among us. But we need to go out and just serve with no agenda because love conquers all. Yes. Give me an issue. Love will fix it. Right. Marriage problems? Love. Kids going astray? Love. Yeah. You're in a dangerous environment? Love. God is love. If I take God's love in, there is no fear. Come on, bro. And it's not because I was a courageous man or that I am one. It's because God showed me his love through my pain. Mm. The drunken, fallen preacher that was the subject of gossip and chatter on the internet mm. that prayed a heartfelt prayer and said, God, if you'll ever use a man like me again, I'll go, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. Hmm. Harassed and helpless. Hmm. The sheep that are forgotten, I'll go to them. Hmm. Why? Because I was fallen. I was forgotten. Hmm. I wasn't a man anymore. Found out I never was. Hmm. I was just busted up. In need of a savior all over again. Mm. And that's why the diary of a prodigal son, I'm the prodigal son, not when I came to Christ, it's when I left him and came back. Mm. Mm. And God said, Now, you understand pain. Mm. You got a heart for people that are hurting. Why? Because you've been hurt. You got a heart for people that have fallen. Why? Because you fell down. Yeah. You remember when Jesus came to Peter and said, Satan has asked to sift you as we. <laughs> Now what we thought he would have said is, I told him no, because you are my boy. He didn't, he said, so, after you have fallen, Peter's like, whoa, after I have fallen, can't you kind of, you know, bounce for me, will you? He's like, no, 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 you got to fall. Wow. And after you've fallen, return and do what? Strengthen your brothers. Mm. Yeah. I need a fallen preacher to preach on the day of Pentecost. You ain't going to have compassion or courage, Peter. Wow. You're wow. hiding. Wow. So I'm going to let Satan deal with you. Ooh. And he did. And that rooster that used to be his curse, every time he heard it, every day he was reminded wow. of denying the Lord. It became his battle cry. Because mm. that's what made Peter his fall. I don't want anybody to fall. But find your pain. Wow. Choose somebody to serve. Find your courage and love will do the rest. Wow. Period. Mm. I'll close with a story, a real story. Come on, man. Come on. I go to death row in Alabama. And in this camp, there's right now currently 21 men sentenced to die in Alabama. And they live in a compound, a cell block all to themselves, no contact with the general population. 21 men that live in a dark dungeon, just like you would think it looks. Eight by ten little cells. It's hot. It smells. 
And these men will face the ultimate penalty. And we go there. And we find out that they've got names. And they've got stories. And they've got children and wives and parents. And they're, they're human beings. Some have problems. Others got lost. Others have the worst day of their lives and can't take it back. Wow. We get to know these people. And you know, I've been going and seeing the men in white when I call them for so long that now these are just more men in white. Because God had taught me to quit worrying about what they had done. Love them. Go love them. Hmm. I'll worry about what they did. Go love them. It'll change your life. Hmm. And so these guys were like those guys to me. So I went in and we started getting connected. And there's a guy in there. They call him Psycho. A psycho, I won't tell you what he did, but he looks the part. Mm. He's missing some teeth because they don't got dental care in there. If you've got a tooth problem, they yank it or else somebody takes it for you. He's got tattoos on his face. He looks a little bit like his name. And I didn't know him very well. And one day he comes to me in this dark, dingy death row. We're all in the same room. There's no guards in there. And he comes to me and he says, Brother Kit, can I talk to you? And I said, yes, Donald. And he said, I want to talk to you right here. I want to talk to you over there. I said, all right. So I followed Donald away from the crowd underneath some stairs in the dark. It doesn't occur to me that I'm following Psycho, the death row inmate to the dark place away from any witnesses. It didn't occur to me. <laughs> he looks at me and he says, I did what they said I did. And I got a question for you. Can your God save a man like me? Wow. I said, yeah. Does he save a man like me? And now in my life, there's no difference between me and Don. He's just a man who's hurt. He needs help. Man. So my question is, can your God save a man like Psycho? Mm -hmm. Come on, like Don? Or can your God say, no, he's too bad. He, he crossed that level, and that bad starts right here. He's not above the line. Mm. Come on, man. And here's what I learned from it. Here's what I take with it. And here's what I will get you to consider <laughs> when, I, when I fly back today. If we're in a dark room, darkness feels so real. Mm. Somebody clicks on the light and the darkness is gone. Like, where did it go? It's an illusion. Mm. It's just the absence of light. Right. That's all the darkness is, mm. right? Yep. What is evil? It's the absence of love. Add love to the equation, and just like darkness, evil flees. Yes. Mm. So I learned this when I go into these places is when I am with the man, if he is evil, he can't be around me if I have God's love. Mm. And perfect love drives out fear. Every time, there is no fear in love. So if I love Donald, then he's good around me. And I see some of the most evil men get good around me and my partners. When we leave, maybe they'll, they go back to business as usual. But in the presence of love, evil and hatred disappears just like darkness. Oh, amen. Perfect love drives out fear. Love is where you're going to find all of God's power. Amen. Compassion, walk a man. Walk a mile in another man's shoes. Yeah. Courage. Don't be so quick to think you don't have any. Yeah. You just got to be put in the right position. You know where the right position is? Right out there. <laughs> and God will do things that you've never believed were possible. Man. Your brother Omar that started everything for me, his federal appointed attorney came to me and said, I've got to go to D.C. and argue this case 
before the Attorney General, the Attorney General. Because when the Fed decides somebody's going to die, they don't like to lose. So you've got to argue that before the trial ever comes. So he said, I've got to go fight for your guy, Omar. i got to, say, I got to have something to show he's different than these other men he's been charged with. And I said, what if I gave you 50 pages of his own handwritten, broken English manuscript talking about his new relationship with God and his new family and his dream to help children? Would that help? And he said, yes. <laughs> and I handed it to him. He went to D.C. And they said, we can't kill this young man. Wow. Amen. So God's already doing a miracle in his life. Wow. Amen. He saved my life, changed my life, and I would say he's responsible for theirs. Because yeah. without him, I would have never found them. Without them, they would have never let me come talk to you. Some old fallen down, broke, broken down, drunken old preacher, and don't worry, he ain't drunk anymore. Got so many years ago. <laughs> they some of y'all are like, drunken preacher? <laughs> Come on, bro. I love you. Amen. I believe in you. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. And also pray for the church that I served in. Atlanta Metropolitan Christian Church in downtown Atlanta, three blocks from Dr. King's tomb. That's where we do our thing. God bless you. Tell us.